Today, we are going to discuss the Matthew Perry book, Friends, Lovers, and the Terrible Bad Thing. Remember, Matthew's words, there were six friends and one was sick. Stay tuned and let's talk about the book. my Cajun cuties. How are y'all this evening? It is Wicked Wednesday and y'all get to spend tonight with this Cajun cutie, Anne Marie. From Caracol, Louisiana, Cajun born, Cajun bred, and when I die, I'll be Cajun dead. Yes, I'm the Cajun crime queen and I'm so excited that y'all came out tonight to cuddle with me and listen to this great episode. I hope you'll have a beverage, a cuddle partner, a fur partner. Those are the best because today, we're going to be talking about someone very special. But before we get started, I want all of y'all to like, subscribe, comment, and make sure y'all press on that notification bell after this video so y'all can always watch a video with me, Anne Marie, and never miss it. Today, we're going to be talking about an actor that has been around for decades and is truly loved by all of us. He is especially a friend to us. Who are we going to talk about today? Matthew Perry. Matthew Perry was born in Williamstown, Massachusetts on August 19, 1969. His mother, Suzanne Marie Morrison and John Bennett Perry. His mother was a Canadian journalist who was the press secretary for the prime minister. And his father, John Perry, was a beautiful, good looking former model and actor. He was in all those Old Spice commercials. I didn't even know what Old Spice was. I had to look it up, but he is a gorgeous man. And he did, he did all the Old Spice commercials back in the day, probably before we were even born. <laughs> yeah, but Matthew and his, Matthew's parents divorced when he was only one year old, being raised mostly by his mother. He was going back and forth, coast to coast, but he was being raised most, mostly in Ontario, Canada with his mother. He also lived in Montreal and Toronto. Now y'all, let me tell y'all, let me pause right there. I've been to Canada several times, several times. I have so many, the best childhood memories. I started going when I was five years old and I have the long life friends that I still connect with today on social media and I still see their kids and growing up and it's just, it's amazing to have those friends. Canada's an amazing place to go, Team Canada. Well, Matthew started attending Rock Cliff Park Public School and Ashbury College in Canada. But y'all, by the time he was 10, he was stealing, making bad grades, smoking. He even beat up the future prime minister, Justin Trudeau. Matthew says he doesn't even know why he didn't want to beat him up, but he did. So at a very young age, Matthew started exhibiting very bad behavior, and we're going to find out why. At the age of 14, Matthew drank a whole bottle of Andres Baby Duck wine. I hope I'm saying that right, at a party. He laid down in the grass, put his arms out, and says, this feels like heaven. This must be be how normal people feel every day. Why did he say that? I, I, I questioned myself when I read that in the book. Why did he say that? And I don't know why, but did he not feel normal when he wasn't so, when he was sober? Maybe y'all can tell me in the comments why, why he feels so good and so normal when he was drunk. He said by the time he was 18, he was drunk every day. He was, he was drinking, couldn't stop. But did y'all also know that Matthew was an incredible tennis player? Incredible, sometimes practicing for 10 hours a day. He was awesome. He was, he was a ranked junior player in Canada. He was, he was gonna make a career out of tennis. But at 15, he moved to LA with his father and the tennis there was a lot harder than it was in Canada. So he wanted to be an actor. So he started doing, taking acting classes, comedy classes. He would go to different auditions. He just wanted his name out there. And he got a, you know, 
an extra role on great movies such as Charles in Charge, which in the 80s, Growing Pains, which is an amazing show, and my favorite show of all time, Beverly Hills 90210. He had a role in that episode as well. I just think he was getting his foot in the door. And in 1993, he landed a starring role with Home Free, and he was on his way to the top. It was a sitcom. Now, I don't know if y'all know, but a lot of people say, which I didn't even know, comedy is very hard to get into. And where I heard that from was Sharon Tate. Sharon Tate was murdered by the Manson family, but she was always in these kind of gloomy movies. And I was like, why do they have this gorgeous, beautiful woman kind of not laughing, not smiling? But she said, in an interview that she was taking classes because comedy is very hard to get into but matthew played it like very successfully and he did everything right and the next year what happened to him i wonder what happened to him he got his main role let's talk about that role now let's talk about the show that made matthew perry chandler bing we all know what it is but i'm gonna give y'all a little fact first I always say things happen for a reason because I truly believe that. I have believed that as long as I lived. Everything happens for a reason. Matthew Perry was supposed to try out for another another show. Well, that so he was committed to that show. So when friends called, he said, I can't try out for this show. I'm already committed to trying out for this show. That, that show fell through. So Matthew Perry got to read for friends. And that changed his whole life. And at just 24 years old, the youngest castmate, he was one of six friends joining Jennifer Aniston, Courtney Cox, Matt LeBlanc, David Schwimmer, and Lisa Kudrow. He loved his castmates. They were all friendly, funny, goofy. He said he had a crush on all of them. He said, how could you not have a crush on all of them? And he said, Lisa Kudrow was the funniest person he has ever worked with. She was just wonderful. And he said he would stare at Jennifer Aniston for sometimes three, four, five seconds. And he said he had to show gratitude sometimes for him, for her allowing that. Because he said, I know she noticed I was looking at her because he had asked her out before they started friends. And she said, you know what? Let's just be friends. They were truly just friends. And Courtney Cox said on the second day that they worked together, let's not compete, let's be a team and a family, which I just find that's so wonderful. That's so awesome. I can't believe she said that. They just stayed connected. And that show, you know, it ran for, for, ten, for, for 10 seasons. And that's amazing. That is truly amazing. He even won an Outstanding Performance Award for, for Friends in 1996. He also said he never went to work drunk ever, 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 but he would go to work hungover. And one day he said he had the shakes. He was tired. He felt awful, but he still showed up for work, but he was just hungover. Jennifer Aniston confronted him and said, we know you've been drinking. We smell it on you. And I'm just here to say that I'm here for you. And he said it just, it made him cry. It, he looked down and said, there's six of us and one of us is sick. That just took to my heart like, like no other. In 97, while filming Fool's Rush In with Salma, Salma Hayek, who's so gorgeous, she's beautiful, he got in a jet ski accident and they gave him Vicodin. He said it felt like warm honey. He said he had to do this again. The next day, 40 were delivered to him. 40. Gosh, that's so many pills to deliver to one person. Also that same year, he did do a 28-day rehab program and came back. He said he would drink the huge quarts of vodka, you know, the ones with the handle, those. He would take Xanax, Vicodin, Oxycontin. He just couldn't get over all the addiction and all the drinking and the pills. He said the only reason he thinks he was alive today was because he didn't try heroin. And the way he would get pills, he would fake back injuries, get on MRIs. He said he would fake different different things like injuries. He would also, this is the worst one, he would go to open houses on Sundays. And when he explained this on the Diane Sawyer interview, he put his head down, I found. I found he was embarrassed. He would go to open houses and see what other people had in their bathrooms. Y'all, that's pitiful. Addiction is real. It's like mental health. 
you cannot get past it. It's a, it's, it's, it just puts it in the same category as mental health or any addiction because it is an, it is an addiction no matter what. He just couldn't get past it. Now, he said, if you look through friends, you see him change slowly, his appearance. He said that when he was overweight, it was the alcohol. When he was super skinny, it was the pills. And when he had a gold tea, it was lots of pills. So he was in a roller coaster, roller coaster. And he had went to rehab 15 times trying to get sober. That is pitiful, but he wanted to get sober because he wanted to be the best actor he could and he wanted his health to be okay. He wanted everything to, to turn out the way he wanted. He wanted fame. He wanted to be loved and he, he felt like he was letting everybody down when he was relapsing constantly. But he had amazing support through family and friends. By the time 2002 hit, the Friends cast, they were making $1 million an episode. $1 million. That's how successful they were. They are also making $20 million a year, supposedly now, for the playback. They play on TV every day. But in 2001, while he was filming Serve and Sarah and the production of, of Friends, he was filming that as well, he paused both productions to go to rehab. He was to learn his words. He couldn't remember his lines. He couldn't remember what he was doing. So he decided to go to re re rehab for Vicodin, methadone, and alcohol. He said he had no memory of the past three years on Friends because he was so messed up all the time. He, he had to get his fixed all the time and had to go to rehab. In 2018, Matthew Perry was in the hospital for five months from a ruptured bowel. He almost died when his colon burst from opioid abuse. Then, two years later, while in rehab, he faked pain to get Oxycontin. And he had to do some type of surgery. I don't know what surgery he had. They gave him propofol, his heart stopped. They had to work on and While working on his heart, they broke eight ribs. So he was just having the hardest time at this point. He actually left Switzerland, where he was in rehab, paid a private jet, $175,000 to fly him back to LA and just to, to see if he can get any type of, of drugs. When doctors refused, he paid another $175,000 on more private jets to fly him back to Switzerland for rehab. This man was so, so in need of help. It was bad. It was very bad, but hey, he was doing what he had to do to feed his habit. And a lot of us do that. Even shoppers do that. Any type of addict needs their fix. And Matthew Perry needed his drugs. He was going to do whatever he needed. And he said, if he added everything up, because it's all about math. Matthew says, when you're dealing with drugs, it's all about math. I mean, taking 55 Vicodin a day, going all the way to 128 pounds, that is crazy, y'all. That is just a hor horrible for your body, for your whole body. But he said he spent around $9 million on everything, on drugs, surgeries, going to rehab 15 times, everything, going to over 6,000 AA meetings. He spent $9 million. Y'all, that's insane. He was on just a roller coaster, up and down, up and down, trying to get sober. And it is a sickness. I didn't really know to our, to, until I read his book. He couldn't just have one drink. It would have to be more and more and more. Not one pill, 55 pills. He was just on the road to destruction. But in 2022, he decided to write a book. Matthew woke up, he went and played pickleball, and then he went home and jumped in his hot tub. He asked his assistant to go run some errands for him. When she got back, she called 911 because she found Matthew unresponsive in the hot tub. They came, the cops came, the ambulance came, everyone came, and he was pronounced dead at the age of 54. No foul play was involved, they think. No illegal drugs were found. They said the only thing that was found in the home were prescription drugs, such as antidepressants, antidepressants, anti-anxiety, and COPD prescription, which is usually commonly treated for chronic bronchitis. 
So we don't know what happened. And you know what? He, a lot of people say he was very fatigued in the, in the last couple of days. They said that he wasn't himself. Even the person that played tennis, uh, pickleball with him said he was, you know, just felt fatigued the last time she had seen him and spoke to him. Also, a hot tub is a death mix. Alcohol, drugs, and a hot tub, those, they always say that's a death mix. He could have been dehydrated. Anything could have happened. He could have had cardiac arrest. He could have just, you know, hit his head. I, I don't, anything could have happened. And it's going to take the toxicology months to come back. We don't even know what happened, but all we know is that our hearts go out to this and to all these people that have had these addictions. That's why Matthew Perry wrote the book, Friends, Lovers, and the Terrible Bad Thing. And the terrible bad, bad thing were his addictions. And it's hard to have an addiction like that, y'all. You, you cannot just get over. It's not like, boom, done, you know, and because every time it's just waiting for you. It's waiting for you. And you want to say, just, I'll just have one drink. I'll just have one drink. And the one drink turns into several. The one pill turns into several. Then you start getting addicted to different things. He had a wonderful life. And another thing he said was he loved staying close to his friends' castmates. And that just made me so proud. And I even watched a 2004 interview with Diane Sawyer and Jennifer Aniston. And she cried over him. She said, I just want... Matthew to know that he's all right, that we love him and we cherish him. And my, my heart, heart goes out to all of you. And any of y'all are suffering from addictions, y'all please get help. And y'all go out and get his book because it explains a lot. And he has said in interviews that a lot of people have become sober because of his book. And that just, that puts a huge smile on my face because I'm a huge fan of Matthew Perry and the show. My final thought, y'all know I always give y'all my final thought. Matthew Perry said he always wanted fame. He always thought it would help, but it didn't. And I don't understand what he meant by that. Did he think that would stop his addiction? Did he think that would make him happy so he wouldn't have to drink and take pills? Why did he want fame to be number one? Well, like my two idols, Elvis Presley and Mar Marilyn Monroe, who were highly addicted to pills, they both said they were terribly lonely, terribly lonely terribly wondering why they had everything in the world and why weren't they happy? Why were they lonely? Marilyn Monroe was the most sought after woman in the world, but was the loneliest woman in the world. Money can make you happy because it can make your life easier, but money cannot make you the happiest person you want to be. It can drain you. It can make you things miserable because money is just a thing that you can just go out and, and, and buy something. But you need more in life, y'all. Y'all need so much more in life. And I think Matthew thought that once he had all this fame, everything was going to stop all his addictions. But it didn't because he wanted more and more and more. Fame wasn't enough to him. Just like Elvis and Marilyn, where they were in life, it wasn't enough for them. So they were lonely and they wanted more and they end up dying from their addiction. And I just hope that Matthew Perry wasn't taking anything. I hope he didn't relapse when he was pronounced dead on October 28th of 2023. And my heart goes out to you. He was buried in California at Forest Lawn. And I hope to go see him when I go to California soon because... I love to go visit Marilyn's grave at least twice a year. She's everything to me. And my heart goes out to Matthew's family, his mother, his father, his stepfather, Keith Morrison. And I hope y'all liked today's video with me, Anne Marie, the Cajun crime queen from Carrico, Louisiana. I hope y'all like, subscribe, comment, and make sure y'all turn on that notification bell to be notified anytime a video comes on by me and never miss anything from yours truly, Anne Marie. I hope you all have a good week and a good weekend.